Hi, my name's Dane, and I'm an Applications Engineer here at Hawk Ridge Systems. Today, I'm going to talk to you about a library feature part I made to demonstrate the effectiveness of the tool and hopefully inspire you to create a few of your own. Library feature parts are a way to automate the creation of features in your parts or assemblies. If you find yourself recreating the same features time and time again, then making them a design library feature will be the first step in automating your designs. You'll be able to drag and drop the repetitive features into new models, which will save you time and the redundancy of remodeling. In this video, I'm going to show you this library feature part I made that will create a mounting bracket above the center of mass of a part with respect to a plane that's going to be level with the horizon. This is a more complicated library feature part with four references. When I create library feature parts, I like to break it down into four stages. In this video, I'm going to take you through all the stages for creating this library feature. The first step is to create a source part. This part will not be used in any of your models, but will be used to define the library features, and will be the file to edit and manipulate if need be. It can be as simple or as complex as you want. The model you can see on the screen is the library feature part used to create a mounting hook on a planar surface. The first few features are just to create some geometry that I can build the desired library features on. These features will not be included in the drag and drop operation. The features with the L on their icons are the library features and will be added when dragged onto another model. The custom properties of this part allow you to add a description of the library feature, which will pop up as a tooltip if you hover over the file in the design library. In this example, I gave it the description of mounting bracket when attaching to a planar face. This step is simple, so it's easily forgotten, but it's very important. In order to actually create a design library feature part, you need to pre-select all the features you want to be included in the drag and drop operation. This pre-selection communicates with SolidWorks which features will be added and which will be left behind. Once the appropriate features are selected, the save as command is used to create the library feature part. Selecting the appropriate file handle, SLD LFP, SolidWorks library feature part, from the type menu, and choosing a location for the file will create the library feature part. I've decided to save it to a custom folder that my design library is pointing to for easy access to the library feature part from the task pane. Now that we are working with the library feature part, there are some changes in the feature tree. The icon is no longer the part block, but a stack of books. There are two new folders at the top of the feature tree, one for references and one for dimensions. The References folder displays all the external references needed to locate the design library features. The locating dimensions are for dimensions to entities external to the features and are used for positioning the sketches. In this example, there are no locating dimensions because the position is defined by the external references and not dimensions. In the Property Manager, after dragging and dropping, there'll be a selection to manipulate locating dimensions. Internal dimensions are not editable from the property manager and are hidden from view. All dimensions left in the dimensions folder are for sizing the sketches and have their own selection in the property manager of the library feature. All of the features that were pre-selected before the save as command have an L attached to their icon, symbolizing those are the features that will be added when the library feature part is used. SolidWorks is a history-based parametric modeler. So references are created between features as they are created. Library features will normally add features near the bottom of the tree and exclude features at the top. This causes a need to understand the relationship between the features because there will be references to features that are left behind that need to be accounted for when being used in a new part. Using the dynamic reference visualization, I can see which one of my library features have references to features not being added into new parts, the ones without the L icon. Those references need to be accounted for when adding the library features to a new part. Hovering over my first library feature, the hanging direction reference axis, we can see that it has a reference to a sketch, 
and the first feature. Editing the feature, we can see that the axis was created using a point and face, both of which are not being added by the library feature. This means that when the library feature is added, these two references will need to be accounted for. The point is the location of the center of mass, and the face is the plane that will be level with the horizon. When I go to the References folder at the top of the tree, I can see the first two references are there. I gave them an understandable name, so when the library feature is being used, that name will be displayed when you're prompted to attach the reference. The next feature being added is the arc plane, which will orient the hoop. The dynamic reference visualization is telling us that it references the hanging direction axes and the boss extrude feature. Editing the feature, we can see that the plane is created parallel to the face on the extrude and coincident to the axes. The face of the boss extrude creates a reference external to the library features which will need to be accounted for. In the References folder, I named this reference the plane parallel to the ring arc. The stopping face sketch is a unique one because it was created using the intersection curve feature. The intent is to create a curve in which the path of the sweep can connect to, creating a starting and ending point. The intersect curve feature references the face of the boss extrude and the arc plane, creating one more reference external to the library features. I named that reference the plane where the ring terminates. This feature is why I had to create three different versions of the library feature part. In this case, the reference is a planar face, but I had to create different versions for a curved and non-analytical face. The sweep feature is the last library feature. It has a reference to all the other library features, but none external to the drag and drop operation. It is sketched on the arc plane with two coincident relations to the stopping face sketch and the center point of the arc on the hanging plane. For this example, the features selected to be library features have only two dimensions, both within the sweep feature. The first one is the diameter of the sweep profile, and the second is the radius of the arc for the ring. The first thing to be done is to name the dimensions, so when they appear in the property manager, it's easy to understand what they are. These dimensions are not locating dimensions and not internal, so leaving them outside of one of the folders places them in the size section of the property manager, giving the user the ability to change the ring dimensions with ease. To use the library feature part, I'm going to drag it from the design library where I saved it. When I hover over the file, we can see a preview and the description that was entered in the file properties. Dragging the file and dropping it into the active part will start the library feature process. In the property manager, we're prompted with the references we need to connect the library feature with this new part. A preview window of the library feature part is also open to show you what the reference is referring to. The first reference we need to select is the face that's going to be level with the ground when hanging. The second click is going to be the location of the center of mass. The third click is going to define the direction and orientation of the ring. And the final click will be the face that the ring terminates on. We can see the ring is placed appropriately on the model, but it is really small. In the property manager, expanding the size section will display the dimensions that were in the dimension folder. Hitting the checkbox to override the dimension values, you can edit the dimensions and see the library feature update on the screen. When you accept the library feature, it's added to the feature tree in a folder-like structure with the same library feature book stack icon. As a proof of concept, I ran a motion study using SolidWorks Motion, a kinematic simulation tool. In the study, I fixed a ring, added gravity, and a solid body contact with friction between the two parts, and watched how the part settled. As we can see, after some swinging, it settled with the selected face parallel to the ground. Just as intended. In today's video, we looked at a library feature I created that can create a mounting ring on a planar face above the center of mass relative to a plane. If you like this video and want to see more like it, subscribe to our channel or check out our website for more great content.